I remember when I first became a software engineer. You low-key think you're a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard. And then you start growing in your career where you're trying to get a little organized and starting to make some tasks, but you're still not quite at the level where you're satisfied. And then because you don't have any kind of real standardized structure, you start getting overwhelmed, demotivated, Hell, it's really hard to live and work within the space when there's shit everywhere. Imagine the scenario where you have kids and you have toys all over the floor. It's okay for a little while, but for all my parents out there, you know after the day's over, it gets super stressful trying to live in your space when your kids' toys are just all over the place. So in this video, I kind of want to just break down my high-level structure on how I stay organized and plan out my coding projects, how I make sure that I'm hitting all of my targets and deadlines. And over the last couple of videos, y'all have seen me truly bounce around the app a little bit. Hit this screen, that screen, this little widget. And a lot of that was just because I needed to learn some of the puzzle pieces to make this app. And I resolved the last puzzle piece, and that was Tanstack Query. Y'all will see more of that in the next video. But for now, I finally feel like I have all of the puzzle pieces figured out so that I can start crushing screens and flushing them all the way out to completion. So in this video, we're going to get organized, get a real structure going so I can stop living with the kids toys on the floor and actually start completing some screens. At the end of the video, I'm going to talk more about how to kind of unblock yourself and deal with this analysis paralysis that you might be feeling because that is something that I'm super passionate about. And I think there are some pitfalls that I personally went through and I want to tell you how I got through them and now making videos 30 weeks later, still crushing the SaaS app and having a whole lot of fun along the way. All right, first order of business, you can't start or do anything without a fun drink. So if you don't have a coffee or a fun drink, stop what you're doing, immediately stop, go get one and then come back. Let's get to it. All right, as you are starting to dive into this process, I have seven steps that I follow on a pretty much daily level at this point to start ideating, decomposing, and working through this effort. So we're gonna go through them step by step. I'll show you any of the tools that I use along the way and some of the things that I like to do. And like I said, just my general approach on how I tackle these you know, monumental capabilities into bite-sized chunks. So the requirements might sound a little more obvious because you should know what you want it to do. But what I really mean here is identifying the requirements of authentication, security, how the flows should actually go. And this is where I kind of go back to what I said in the previous video of building some something where you are already intimately familiar with the product because those user flows is something you will already know what you want it to do. Think of the auth screen, for example. You know with authentication, you need something for users to input information. You know you need some buttons for users to submit that information. And then you need to integrate with some other auth provider or roll your own to actually do the credential management, checking verification, handling JWT tokens or JWTs and all of those types of things. And that's loads of tickets right out of the gate. We haven't even talked about styling or theming or logos or any of that stuff, which a lot of people like to jump to immediately. Understanding your user flows. Sometimes if you need to draw a couple sketches, go for it. That's actually step two. But if you are not as familiar with the product that you're building, sometimes just getting on the whiteboard and drawing boxes is really, really helpful. And truthfully, in my home office, that's exactly why I have this whiteboard right behind me. If you are making this product for yourself, Maybe additional requirements are eventually how you're going to make money for this product. If you decide to make any money, some of those might be the user acquisition, how you're going to get and onboard new users and a whole slew of other things. But don't be afraid. This part might seem overwhelming because it is a lot of things to think about. So I suggest just throwing down bullet points at this stage and just getting the rough outline, hit up ChatGPT, get a rough outline of what it should do, some of the flows, some of the ideas and things like that. Nothing is a wrong answer here. Nothing is off the table. Just brain dump the bullet list and move on. Now, the second step I like to do is called the rough sketch. And this is where you're thinking of those user flows and just start drawing boxes. Nothing's pretty, nothing's laid out. I like to use paper and pencil or the whiteboard. And if I am using paper and pencil, I like to use these little stickies and highlight different features or capabilities or thoughts and just throw them on my mocks. If I'm using a whiteboard, I'll use full size sticky notes and just cover that thing head to toe and stickies. It gets a little chaotic, but chaos at this stage is perfectly normal and it's perfectly fine. And quite truthfully, it's a whole hell of a lot of fun. At least for me, I'm definitely a uh, zero to one big picture, -y, you know, type let, let's get moving kind of guy. So I have a lot of fun in this stage. Just ideating and brain dumping. And let's be totally transparent. At this stage, you've not identified what the MVP is yet. You've not identified what the end product is yet. Go ahead, nothing off the table, 
draw to your heart's content. Be quick, be fast, and if you want a nice little trick, you can play into Parkinson's Law and time box yourself, say, give yourself an hour to come up with a sketch, put a clock that you can see the time ticking down, and you will, promise you, you will feel that little bit of an internal pressure and just start cranking designs. So in the brain dump stage, I like to honestly get a fun drink, put on some Zen music, and just start writing in Notion. So Notion is like my main tool of choice here. I actually was going to use GitHub projects, and behind the scenes, I even recorded a clip of me starting to set up GitHub projects and how I'd go through that. But I realized and decided that I am a huge fanboy of having my documentation and my notes and my ideas alongside my Kanban ticketing system and Notion actually makes that even easier now. So stay tuned for that. We'll dive in once we start ideating and setting up tasks. But for now, this is just the brain dump time. So just open a random page in Notion and start putting bullet points. Nothing too detailed, nothing too in depth here, just getting it out of your brain and onto paper. And one of the other reasons I like using Notion for this is ideas come at you all the time. You could get out of the shower and have a brand new idea and you're like, oh, I love that. Just throw it in your Notion page and walk away and forget about it. Notion is my quote unquote second brain here because I'm a huge fan of that quote that your brain is not for storing ideas, it's just meant for having ideas. Just start thinking of your big screens, your big features, off uh, another screen, another page in your app and start ideating and brain dumping anything. Everything is fair game. Nothing is off the table. If you want your thing to have an animation of a dog that does backflips, this is the time to put a bullet point down for the dog doing backflips. Also, if you implement that, uh, please send me the link because it sounds super hilarious and I want to see it. And if you have no idea on how to start this brain dump session, what I really encourage you to do is go into ChatGPT and treat ChatGPT as your brain dump assistant. Say, hey, ChatGPT, give me a list of 25 questions for you to be a product manager of this thing that I am building. Here is the gist of what I would like it to do. You know, for me, I'm making this product for woodworkers to help eliminate the waste, streamline their process, give them a space to track all of their financials, and ultimately have the user stop doing all of that stuff in paper. Like that is literally the prompt that I used. And then ChatGPT shot out 25 questions to better understand my product. Once you answer those 25 questions, ChatGPT is super powerful for leading you in this journey along brain dumping and strategizing and things that your app should or shouldn't have. So I think this is a super powerful tool that is a superpower if you can figure out how to let ChatGPT ask you the question so that the LLM knows where you're trying to head, you know, the tone, the brand, the strategy, all of those things of whatever it is that you're building. So you have some rough sketches, you have a list of questions and possibilities and tasks and things that you just brain dump. We haven't written a single task yet, but now is the time that you identify your MVP. What is the minimal viable product or MVP in, in our field for you to ship this product and actually put it in somebody's hands? And this is no shit. What are the absolute minimum features that you need this thing to do? No fanciness here, raw, just straight process flow functionality that you need to provide your customer or your user or yourself to actually have this product. You don't want to over engineer at this point. You just want the dumbest, simplest solution. There'll be some maybe complex features that you say, nope, this is the whole point of the app. Maybe a version of that is the MVP, but this is now the time to start saying, hey, that dog doing a backflip animation probably isn't actually needed right now. Now, if you're trying to sell crazy animation tools, maybe something like that as a really high quality example is, is part of your MVP. But for most of us, those types of things are way in the future. You are not remotely close to that type of work when you need raw functionality at this point. So identify that MVP, what is the absolute minimum amount of work and be totally ruthless with yourself. And an easy way to start identifying the MVP is think of your app as if it was linear left to right. Off screen, what is the next screen after that? What's the next screen after that? And 
along the journey of identifying this left to right. And, and this is where your rough sketches can be really helpful. As you start working through this screen by screen, I guarantee you're gonna come up with four or five high level things on each screen, whether it be on the front end, the back end, whatever. Those will become your tickets. So you're pretty confident and you're feeling good that you have identified the absolute MVP. You have sticky notes like this all over your pages. You got sticky notes on the whiteboard. You got rough sketches. You have a brain dump of the long-term vision and you're ready to start making tasks. Before you dive into your Notion Kanban board or GitHub pages or wherever you're going, draw the cut line. This is something I see too many people skip and they just trust their first gut glance at the MVP. Drawing the cut line and adding LOEs or level of efforts onto each part of your MVP is going to tell you if it's really an MVP. I almost guarantee that your first cut at an MVP because you're feeling energized and motivated and all those things is not really the MVP. So for me, let me give a personal example with Benchbox. So on Benchbox, I had the idea that I was going to create a calendar widget for the user to create upcoming events. And that is something I want to do. Part of the whole management system for the woodworker is knowing what events or workshops or all of these things that they're going to, but that's not an MVP. An MVP to me is the ability to create a raw project without steps, being able to create an inventory item, being able to create a sale or expense, and then see some of those things on the dashboard. That's it, there's no toolbox right now, there's no notifications, nothing like that. All of those things are nice to haves and ideally will come shortly after the MVP, but the main goal is to get this as an MVP and then let the users tell you what the hell they actually need in the immediate future. Maybe upcoming events is not as important as the notifications feature. I have my own personal opinions on those things, but I'm not going to be the only customer. And the idea is you get the MVP out so that the customers or the clients or your managers at work can tell you what you did or didn't do right. So be proud of your first draft of the MVP, but realize that it is probably not good enough, not lean enough, and go and draw the cut line and do it again. Once you draw the cut line, if you're satisfied at that point, then you're ready to rock. But at this point, your tickets should be, you know, one to two days of work for a total feature, not this is gonna take me two weeks for a total feature. If you're still at the point of this is gonna take me two weeks for a total feature, you've not broken things down enough. And I think you should spend more time on drawing a cut line again and again and again until all of your individual features for the MVP are you know, within a couple days reach. All right, after all of that work, it is finally time for you to now start picking the technical stack. And some people will pick the tech stack right out of the gate. And I used to do that when I was coming up as an engineer. Oh, I'm gonna use Java for this and you know, Angular for the front end or React for the front end. I used to do that. I recommend now identifying the MVP and then picking the tech stack after that. And the reason I say that is imagine a world where you're like, oh, I need a queuing system. So I'm gonna use SQS because Amazon's SQS is really, really good. And you do all of this work to create tickets of like, okay, make the SQS, make clients for the SQS, like all of those types of things. And you waste all of that time doing it. And then you really get into the MVP stage and you're like, oh my God, I actually realized because I started to really think through this effort, I really want Apache Airflow because it already handles queuing and like a task execution system. And now all of that work you put into SQS tasks and ticketing and drawings and blah, 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 wasted. So for me, I actually like to think through of the bullets, the requirements, get some rough sketches, identify all of the brain dumps and get to an MVP and then pick the tech stack to actually apply and get to that MVP. I find it really challenging to try to apply a tech to a problem you don't actually understand yet. And that seems to be the common flow for a lot of us developers. And I think that's just out of like a, a safety thing. We're very comfortable with the tech stacks we like. So of course we're gonna use them. But try out this new direction of identifying the MVP and all of those bullet points first. Seriously, at this point, no tickets are written and now identify your tech stack and see if you like it. For me, it's been a huge game changer of really using the right tech for the right problem and not trying to fit you know the square peg in the round hole. And now we can finally start diving into Notion and writing out tickets. So on Notion, I use the Kanban board where I can 
hook things automatically up to GitHub. So if you're unaware, in Notion now, you can set up a new connection directly to your GitHub account, where anytime that you put a special unique identifier in a pull request, your Kanban born status will automatically get updated. So you can move something into in progress, do the work on a new branch, and then set up a PR, and then your PR will track the ticket all the way to close. So I think that's super nice. I think it's super helpful to kind of automate some of those things. This is where if you don't care about having your documentation directly alongside your tasks, I really just recommend using GitHub projects because all of that integration and direct feature flow is in there for you. But if you're like me, where you like everything in one nice tidy space, Notion is a really, really good product to handle all of that workflow and things for you with very simple integrations. So some of y'all might be asking, hey, Peacock, how, how often should I do this process? Should I do it every day? Should I do it every week? Genuinely, I probably recommend at least once every other week, not going through all of the work, but just kind of retidying up things that are stale now, things that are still in progress, things that are finished and you never move them, and just trying to stay organized. And a few of my colleagues recently kind of got into this analysis paralysis stage where they're like, hey, I don't, I don't know how to keep moving. I'm so confused. I don't want to make bad steps or choose the wrong tech stack or go in the wrong direction. And here's my real advice for you. It's really easy to get into this analysis paralysis stage when you're overwhelmed. And truthfully, I was very much in this stage when I was looking to start YouTube videos. I never really struggled with tech projects because I was already very comfortable with them, but it's really easy to get overwhelmed when this is something brand new for you. And a couple of the things that I did that were kind of like magic for me and, and solved my analysis paralysis, especially with making content like YouTube videos, was honestly identifying that I was afraid. I was afraid of making bad videos. Truthfully, I was afraid that nobody would give a shit. I was afraid that it would just be another thing that I would start and kind of put up on the shelf after, you know, three, four, five weeks. For me, identifying that fear and weirdly and oddly enough, just kind of calling it out for what it is was like a absolute freaking night and day difference where like magic, once I acknowledged the fear and said, all right, well, I am afraid of doing these things, but I'm still gonna do it anyways. For whatever reason, I was just able to push through that barrier immediately and just start having fun. The other big thing is it is so damn easy to get overwhelmed when your life is just full of chaos. It's so easy to get overwhelmed when you've not done anything. And truthfully, I know some of y'all are afraid of making steps in the wrong direction. Well, here's what I have to tell you. You are guaranteed to go the wrong direction if you don't make any steps. But if you go a direction, you're still going to learn something. Maybe it is the quote unquote wrong direction for the end goal, but it's just a side quest. It is not the wrong direction for your whole career. And it's not going to waste a ton of time because like I said, you're still going to learn something. And real talk, anytime that you get to learn something, you are going in the right direction. This is a skill and a trait and a habit that I had to learn over a decade of doing software engineering of oh, I don't want to pick the wrong tech. It's fine. Pick the wrong tech, learn about it. Then you know, all right, go pick the next tech. Go and learn about that one. It Maybe it's the right solution. Maybe the first solution you picked was the right thing. You won't know until you try. Don't be afraid of it. Go after whatever it is that you want. Have a lot of fun and just start focusing on the now and not how. Just make some steps because sometimes the picture is a little fuzzy and it doesn't become clear until you get a little closer to it. And you only get closer by taking step after step after step. So I hope y'all appreciated this. I had a lot of fun making this one. I'm super passionate about this topic of analysis paralysis because this is something that I really struggled with. And if y'all want a deeper dive into some of my personal experiences and solutions, let me know and we can hit that up in another video. But for now, I gotta start flushing out some screens. I'm at this stage where I'm feeling good. All of the puzzle pieces are figured out. So with that, I'll see you all next week. Peace.